Good morning. This is Spring Valley Bible Church Online. My name is Kit Sheehan. Good morning. Let's uh, spend a, a few moments in a word of prayer to prepare our souls for our worship service. Thank you, Father, for the freedom we have in this country to study and teach your word that we might op openly proclaim the, the message from Christ. We pray for our country that uh, more people will hear the message, uh, that uh, people will make a decision for Christ. And we pray that uh, the Christians will walk by faith. Uh, as goes the Christian in a country, so goes the, the country. So we pray now, Father, that you'll prepare our souls for the uh, worship uh, and study and uh, of your, your word. Uh, we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. I guess you got some good songs for us today, Brian, huh? Sure do, Kit. Yes. Uh, would you all please join us now in singing Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, number 165, in the hymnal number 165, all the verses of Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. All right, up in the hymnal, number 231. If you have a hymn book, please turn over to 231, the song called Count Your Many Blessings. Count Your Blessings, 231. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count 
Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done too. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you is wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Okay, good morning, good morning. Uh, let's go into prayer here. Uh, got a couple of, of uh, things uh, we talk about. Uh, uh, in the Rembert family, uh, uh, Cora passed away. Um, so please pray for the Rembert family. Um, also, I think on our list is uh, Watan. Um uh, she had a uh, already one surgery on her lungs, but uh, she has a cancer surgery pending. So uh, pray for the doctors that they uh, uh, may, may uh, be adept at, uh, at the surgery, guided by God, um, that the surgery would be uh, successful and pray for her healing. Um, now, I, I talked with uh, uh, Chris Dague uh, through uh, email this past week. Uh, concerning the Liberty Youth Group, uh, last week they had the breakthrough camp, and his uh, what he said was breakthrough was a wonderful weekend. We had twenty seven young adults join us, and we were studying Hebrews chapter seven, and what it means that Christ is our high priest. It was very encouraging to see these young people in the scriptures. Let me look at the uh, prayer. Here we are. We uh, start with a prayer for uh, Herman and Judith. Um, I think I'll try and visit them this week. Uh, um, uh, in the prayer list, we've been praying for Judith. Um, I think she's uh, feeling much better. Uh, but pray for continued healing and uh, perseverance of uh, Judith and Herman. Um, also pray for John and Judy Hintz, Tucson Bible Church. Um, I don't know what... Uh, well, where he is uh, as far as his health, uh, but pray for the church there as well, uh, that uh, they can continue. Uh, pray for Jody and Kim Brown uh, uh, at Atlanta Christian Church in Indiana. Um, uh, Jody has often been uh, uh, working with the, uh, the youth group, um, very helpful, very uh, giving instruction. Uh, pray for Fossil and Carrie John uh, at the Pakistan, right on the in the battle there in, uh, in a Muslim world. 
uh, and they're having a, a good outreach. Um, some of the Muslims are um, intrigued, perhaps, by their love. Um, that uh, Christianity is uh, sometimes um, hidden in Muslim countries because it's forbidden. Um, if a Muslim becomes a Christian, um, they are subject to be uh, uh, killed. Uh, that's just, uh, that's how they work things. Um, the Risley family, uh, they're also on the, on the battle lines, uh, with, uh, in Mexico between the, the drug cartels, um, uh, we, I believe they're also on our, our prayer list. Dan and Pat Hill, uh, we talk about them on in, in the prayer list. Uh, they have a, a mission in, uh, in Africa. I believe they're home. Um, and uh, don't forget uh, our our prayers for those in uh, in the military, uh, police, and fire. Uh, they're in danger's way every every day. We pray especially for Tennessee. He's deployed overseas, um, and we know that uh, we we don't know where he is, but we know that people that are deployed to to Syria, in Iraq, and other places uh, are in danger of uh, being attacked. Um, uh, we've seen that recently in uh, Syria. Uh, pray for Spring Bible, uh, Spring Valley Bible Church. Um, uh, we need uh, all the prayers we can get to keep us uh, going and on track. And uh, maybe someday we'll get uh, 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 get a building and uh, be able to meet uh, face to face. Um, pray for our leaders. Um, uh, uh, pray for our country. Uh, I pray, uh, like I say, I pray for Ted Cruz often. Um, I know he's a believer. I believe that Mike Johnson, the, the uh, Speaker of the House, I think he's a believer. And there's other believers in the in the in the government, and it's difficult and sometimes for them to uh, to keep to their beliefs. Um, the uh, the world system keeps wanting to uh, to push us off track. So uh, uh, pray for them that they can stay on track and and uh, be empowered by God, the Holy Spirit, to uh, to make uh, good and wise decisions. Uh, continue to pray for Herman for healing, strength, and endurance. Uh, the youth ministry. Uh, uh, we talked. Uh, I'll show you a little bit here their their website, uh, but uh, they have uh, a uh, a good outreach. Uh, and uh, pray for me. Uh, I appreciate your prayers so that I can sit down and and study and uh, 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 generate a lesson for each week. Um, let's see here. I go to here's our website, uh, springvalleybiblechurch.org. Uh, as I say, you can go to uh, the listen page and go to Romans and you'll uh, find uh, the handout um, usually almost always I post the PDF file there the night before so that you can have it uh, on Sunday morning um, contributions if you uh, so desire if you uh, not not uh, grudgingly uh, but of a uh, heart uh, full of the Holy Spirit uh, you can uh, donate. Uh, it goes through PayPal. Uh, don't have to have an account there, uh, so you can uh, give or you can mail it in to this address. Um, and don't forget the, the Liberty Youth Group. Um, talking with uh, with Chris Dag uh, every week, they pray for us, and every week we pray for them. Um, hey so, kid. Yes. Just a quickly before I forget. Uh, Eve has just posted an update in our live chat. She's still in leg brace at zero ten extension. Hope that she would have it released to thirty percent in a week. And other than that, everything is well. Okay, so pray for continued healing for Eve, uh, and uh, that. Uh, she might uh, get back to some kind of uh, normalcy with her use of her legs. 
So, um, and uh, Liberty Youth Group, uh, they they have their website if you happen to to want to go there. Um, uh, so they've got uh, uh, information about uh, their camps, and uh, specifically, we want to make sure we pray for their leadership. Uh, you've got all the people here. You got Lorraine, Chris Dag, and. Larry and Brian Wise, the Rise family, and all the others. Uh, and uh, as time goes on, those uh, uh, young people that uh, were um, in uh, high school and in college have graduated, and some of them have come back and uh, are uh, joining part of the staff of uh, uh, Liberty Youth Group. Um, now, I need to go back to uh, my prayer list here because I didn't finish. Uh, so uh, uh, thanks for the prayers for Kaylee. Um, uh, God is working in her life, but uh, please continue to pray for her. Um, uh, she has uh, various challenges in her life. God knows exactly what, what she needs. Um, uh, I think we could probably take uh, a Rich off the, uh, the prayer list. Um, he went home to, to be with the Lord. I'm assuming he was a believer. Um, yeah, but he'd pray for his family. Uh, Roland is uh, doing fine. Uh, we might uh, uh, take him off. Uh, he seems to have stabilized. He's back to driving, so I guess he's uh, some kind of normalcy. We mentioned uh, Juan Tan. Uh, uh, she's had one surgery and is... Uh, uh, about to have another surgery, so need to pray for the doctors for the success of the surgery and for her continued healing. Um, and we've had a number of people that have been uh, promoted home to the Lord uh, to pray for their families. Um, and uh, again, the, the sixth grader, um, it's uh, unusual, I guess, for young children to have cancer, but uh, um, we, they, it does happen from time to time. And, uh, I don't know if you watch TV, they have various hospitals, uh, uh, asking for money and they, uh, they have, uh, um, uh, St. I believe it's St. Jude hospital. And there's others that, uh, that, uh, focus on, on young children. Um, but it does happen. And I've, I've been reading that young, uh, more and more, uh, young people are getting cancer for one reason or another. Um, uh, we, we talked about, uh, Eve, um, uh, please pray for continued, uh, uh, um, healing, uh, for rehab, uh, that she's got a, a leg brace on. I know that can be difficult to get around in, but at least maybe she's got some mobility, but we pray that, uh, uh, that that leg brace can come off, uh, fairly soon. Um, continued prayers for Phyllis, um. Um, uh, Terry struggling with health challenges and then we have uh, Judith she's feeling better um, whoops uh, so uh, again praying for Judith and Herman but uh, uh, Judith was sick for a while and I think she's feeling much better now um, modern uh, antibiotics and other medicines uh, thank you for continued prayer for Joanna. She's still hanging in there. Um, and, uh, some, some weeks she's, uh, uh, feeling down or, or gets sick and, uh, then she's better. Uh, the biggest problem of course is her aneurysm. We talked about the troops. Um, uh, and that's an important thing as far as the spiritual, spiritual aspect, um, that, uh, uh that, uh, those people that are at least are questioning uh, about God, that they get a good hearing of the gospel and the believers that they have access to Bible information, uh, uh, fellowship, Christian fellowship um, and protect uh, protection and, uh, and uh, good health. Uh, we, we talked about Tennessee already uh, that he gets uh, access to uh, spiritual food and fellowship um, we've got, uh, numerous others. Um, I remember, uh, Herman talks a lot about Cindy Edwards. She's a longtime listener. Uh, uh, uh pray for her as, as for her healing. Um, 
pray for Israel. Uh, I think uh, Netanyahu was on uh, uh, on TV on uh, Maria Bartiromo Sunday's show. Um, there, uh, everybody focuses on on uh, uh, what what uh, Israel is doing, and they have to destroy God, uh, the uh, Hamas because Hamas is uh, their vow is to to wipe Israel out. And certainly on October 7th, they tried. Uh, but uh, people forget sometimes what happened on October 7th. It was a very terrible situation. And I pray for the uh, the hostages taken as is Israel. Believe there may still be some Americans there. Don't know if they're Christians. Pray that uh, the Christians uh, will be able to give the gospel to the non-Christians. Or pray for their captors, uh, that their captors might believe in Jesus Christ. Um, so we talked about Cora. She passed uh, 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 passed on. So we'll pray for her family. Um, uh, let's see here. Do I need? Uh, I believe that's. Uh, I believe that's all I was going to say here. We just let's go into prayer, prepare our souls for the. The teaching of uh, God's word and lifting up of these people uh, that we have on our list to uh, to the Lord, uh, remembering that uh, uh, was it James says uh, you have not because you ask not. So we we lift up our prayers so God will hear them and and uh, um, He has a plan. So we pray pray for uh, um, that that plan. Thank you, Father, for, again, for uh, being able to study and teach in freedom, uh, that we can openly uh, give the gospel. In some countries, we know that uh, um, bad things can happen to the people that give the gospel in some countries. Uh, it's forbidden. Um, and we pray for people in uh, countries like uh, Saudi Arabia that... Uh, um, that want to believe in Jesus Christ and uh, that they can hear the gospel and that they can be protected uh, uh, when they do believe. We pray uh, um, for these people that we have uh, uh, mentioned. Uh, we especially pray for Herman and Judith. Uh, uh, pray for the uh, uh, Eve and, and Tennessee and each one of the, the members of the Spring Valley Bible Church uh, uh, membership. And pray now, Father, that you'll give me words, uh, empower me with the Holy Spirit to uh, uh, give a message that uh, will help uh, those that listen. Uh, we ask this in Christ's name, amen. Okay. Um, before we get started, uh, just a, a word to uh, uh, um, stay in fellowship. Um, I know that sometimes you watch TV, uh, you read stuff on the internet, and you can become so so angry that you're out of fellowship. You want bad things to happen to bad people, but uh, it's up to God to uh, uh, to manage history and. Uh, we can pray for our country. We can pray that uh, the gospel will be spread, that Christians will walk by faith. We can pray for healing. Um, um, but uh, uh, we should not uh, um, uh, sit in anger. Anger can eat up your soul. Uh, anger, hatred um, can uh, destroy your Christian life. So we need to stay in fellowship. Uh, we need to pray for those that uh, are our enemies, um, that uh, they might hear the gospel and believe. And there are people on the front lines that we prayed about uh, that are giving gospel to people who are hostile to Christianity. Um, so um, uh, 
stay in fellowship, understand God's in charge of history. Um, and prayer is so important uh, in that relationship we build with, with God the Father uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit taking us to Jesus Christ, uh, knowing uh, a doctrine, being filled with the Spirit taking us to God the Father. Um, that uh, if you've got a problem with, uh, with something happening in the world, take it to God the Father. Uh, he may uh, uh, give put you in a situation where you can see. Sometimes it's a matter of perspective. I know that sometimes uh, I see things and uh, uh, maybe I get mad. Uh, I I, can, I give the story sometimes of driving to work um, before I retired, driving to work on I thirty and uh, trying to pass a an eighteen wheeler. And there's someone behind me, he's maybe 10 feet, sometimes they're closer than that, trying to push me to go faster than, the, than, than I'm going. I might already be going five miles over the speed limit. Um, and, you, and you can get so mad and angry um, that, that you just, uh, you're not thinking straight. So uh, instead of that, uh, you can pray for the person behind. Okay, God got the message. You want me to pray for the guy's salvation behind me, or maybe it's a Christian. Uh, as uh, one pastor said, some of the best people in the world are Christians, and some of the worst people in the world are Christians. So when we're out of fellowship, we do bad things, and we need to get back in fellowship, walk by faith, walk by faith, constantly trusting God. And uh, if we don't like something, pray about it. Ask God for either help to understand what's going on or uh, that uh, he might change things. Uh, anyhow, enough preaching there. Let me get to the, the message. Uh, so we're, we're moving on a little bit here, uh, uh, finishing up with uh, Romans uh, chapter 1, verses 5, uh, moving into chapter uh, verse 6 and 7. And uh, I was thinking, you know, what if, what if uh, uh, we, we got uh, Apostle Paul God says, "Okay, you want you want you want uh, Apostle Paul to come down and teach. Well, I'll send him down. I'll send him down in my resurrection body." Well, now that we know that's not going to happen, but what if he did? What would he teach about? Probably the Book of Romans. Uh, we're we're Gentiles, <clears throat> uh, so uh, so we have his writing. We have his message to the church. Certainly, it was to the Roman church, uh, but uh, uh, it is for the church today. We teach it because it is. It contains doctrine. And I, I've, I've run across uh, people that say that the book of Romans is one of the best pieces of literature in human history. Uh, it is so well written, so compact, full, so full of information uh, that not just it's the, one of the, the, the best books in the Bible. Of course, as we study any book that we study in the Bible is going to be at that time the best book. I know that. Uh, just ask me about the book of Zephaniah. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, I enjoyed the book of, of John. And as I go through, I understand and I discover things. And I hope you discover them too. Uh, the joy of seeing uh, things in the Bible, how they connect. I call it the fabric of Scripture. So... Um, so anyhow, I'm trying to teach the the, the book of Romans, uh, trying to give it uh, uh, the word's life so that it communicates. Uh, I seem to spend a lot of time, but then uh, looking at other pastors, whether it's Herman or or uh, Robbie Dean or others, um, they spend a lot of time on individual words uh, because the words are there for our benefit. It's not just that we read it, okay, you got it, okay, let's move on. Uh, but there's there's things that connect. And so sometimes I like to to uh, connect uh, one word that or see how things are, uh, a thread of, of the fabric of Scripture goes through a, a passage. Now let's go through and uh, uh, get a running start by, by reading, uh, uh, starting with Romans 1.1. Uh, 1 .1. Paul a bondservant of Christ Jesus, called or appointed to be an apostle set apart for the gospel. So right there we've seen uh, three points that uh, uh, Paul says about himself. 
Paul is a slave of Christ Jesus, appointed as an apostle, and set apart for the gospel of God, his mission. Verse 2, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. In other words, the Old Testament. So this is not something new. This is something that has been going on ever since uh, the Genesis chapter 3. Uh, Romans 1, 3, concerning his son, who was not born of, but became a seed of David according to the flesh. Just as we talked about uh, John 1, 14, uh, that the word uh, became flesh. The same word that's used here is, is used there. Uh, uh, God took on flesh, God the Holy uh, the Son. So the, that uh, uh, salvation had to be done, had to be accomplished by God, but it had to be accomplished also by a man because God could not be judged for sin. God had to judge sin. So God became flesh, and in, in that flesh, uh, sin was judged. Romans 1, 4, who was declared or appointed the Son of God with power? Uh, and remember, it's not he wasn't appointed son of God. It was uh, appointed son of God with power and and not by, but uh, as Robbie Dean said, because of the resurrection of the dead, from the dead, according to the spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ. And uh, Andy Woods, I ran across that this week, so I add that, that here. Uh, Andy Woods, uh, he's a pastor of Sugarland Bible Church uh, down in Houston, Uh and he's also president of Chafer Theological Seminary. And he taught that, that Paul gives six characteristics of Jesus Christ in these first six verses. Actually, it's uh, verses three through six, just three verses. So it starts out, uh, we've talked about his uh, his sonship, that he's he is God. Uh, his royal identity, uh, the son of David or a seed from David. And we talked about the Davidic covenant. Um, but that means he's royalty. Uh, we we sometimes uh, forget that he is king, uh, in in uh, the in the Jewish context, uh, and then his humanity. So, uh, as we said, he became flesh. So you have divinity plus uh, humanity, and that's the hypostatic union. Well, we we had a whole whole uh, session on that, and then the authentication. We talked, uh, we had a, a, a series or a, a lesson on resurrection and how important that is. And uh, as I get time, I'm going to uh, uh, put together a an Easter uh, a resurrection Sunday. We talk about Easter uh, and that's the common parlance, but really it's the resurrection Sunday. <clears throat> but the resurrection is very, very important. Uh, there's no gospel without it. And we'll get to that uh, as we go through 1 Corinthians chapter 15 uh, on Resurrection Sunday. And then his lordship and then his gift in, in uh, 5 and 6. Romans 1, 5, uh, through whom, through Jesus Christ, we have received grace and apostleship uh, to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for his name's sake. So uh, here we pick up all, and uh, I uh, uh, this word all appears in many places in the Bible. Uh, the inclusiveness uh, we saw that uh, in in Zephaniah uh, all in Zephaniah uh, chapter one verse two uh, how the the uh, the surface of the of the earth will be uh, wiped clean of all. Uh, so judgment uh, is on all those who do not believe and uh, you get uh, uh, John 3.16 and 3.36, uh, those who don't believe. So in here, in this, in this uh, uh, chapter, there are six uses of the words all. And we noted uh, when we did Zephaniah and other passages and judges that... Um, uh, the repetition of a word can can emphasize it. So when it emphasizes, what what is it emphasizing? What does it lead us to? So it's almost like you can can pull on this little thread, you know, the word all, and where does it take us? Uh, and it's like uh, I I thought of it as like a fishing line. You got something on your line, and you pull in. What did I get? What did I get? Well, where does this all take us? Uh, so the first three of these all statements go from the general 
So it's to all Gentiles and the people at uh, Rome are all are, are Gentiles. And then he, he narrows it down. Uh, so within the Gentiles, you have all of you in Rome. And then it becomes very personal, all of you. And, and uh, yes, he's writing to Rome, but the book is for us. So you, me, uh, he's writing to us. Since we stated in agreement with conservative commentators of the book of Romans, that the central topic of the book of Romans is the gospel, we should glean from this that the gospel message is for all, including you and me. The first three all in our uh, start in our verses today, verses 5 and 7, and continues in, in verse 8, which we'll get to hopefully next week. So in verse 5, obedience of the faith among all the Gentiles. The letter is addressed to all those in Rome. Uh, uh, and I thank God for all of you. Often uh, we, we talk about the gospel, uh, and we what we talk about is really the um, salvation of the unbeliever. Uh, uh, but it's more than that. Uh, we've seen that with uh, when Herman teaches the gospel for the Christian. So instead of, uh, uh, I will try uh, uh, to translate it uh, as uh, good news. We know that the gospel comes, I believe it's from the Old English, uh, which really means good, uh, good news. But uh, when, we, when we, uh, uh, we just say gospel, and we think of the gospel for the unbeliever. But if we, we say good news, well, okay, with the, the book of Romans, the, the topic of Romans is good news. Good news for the unbeliever, uh, faith in Jesus Christ is salvation. But we also have, a, as it were, a salvation for the believer. Uh, we are, as, as we've talked before, there's three phases of salvation. Uh, the belief uh, on Jesus Christ, uh, at the point of salvation there, uh, we are saved. And uh, as uh, there are passages that talk about being saved in our life, and the idea is that we are walking by faith. Uh, and then we have ultimate uh, sanctification when we uh, go to heaven. So if the good news in, in the book of Romans, uh, if indeed is the central topic of Romans, and it is, then it's not just for unbelievers, chapters 1 through 4, but it's also good news for the believers. Specifically, we, we concentrate that, that uh, thought in chapters uh, 6, 7, and 8. And chapter 8 being, being one of those, those uh, chapters in the Bible that concentrates on spirituality. So with the, we'll get to the the last three uses of the of the uh, all in the first chapter of Romans uh, later on. Uh, but uh, uh, verse sixteen indicates what I said above: for for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to all who believe, to the Jew first and also the Greek. So the last two appearances of all in the chapter one deal with unbelievers who have rejected the gospel. So you have all those who believe and you have all those who reject Jesus Christ as Savior. So you have all and all. So there's nothing in between. And we don't believe in purgatory. It's not in our Bible. Uh, some people will look at the um, Apocrypha or Pseudopigrapha um, and uh, find things there, but we don't accept that as our Bible. Now, the last phrase in Romans 1.5, which we didn't really cover uh, last week, but we'll cover it this week. Among all the Gentiles, let me get... Paul is often called the uh, apostle of the Gentiles or to the Gentiles. His focus was to the Gentiles although his ministry always started with the Jew first. When he went to, uh, uh, to uh, a new place, especially in Asia, um, that's what we know of as Turkey, and he also went to Greece, that he'd often, uh, usually, almost always, go to the synagogue first and reason with the Jews. Some of them would believe, and many of them would not. And sometimes they'd kick him out, and he'd have to go to a house church, 
uh, but uh, he'd always go to the Jew first. Um, so when the Jews rejected the message, then he went to the Gentiles. Many of the Jews of Paul's time, as well as our own time, have rejected the Messiah. Jesus was a Jew. He descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His ministry was to the house of Israel. He specifically said that. Now, there were uh, unbelieving uh, Gentiles that came to Jesus for help. And uh, uh, when they illustrated their faith, he was amazed sometimes in his humanity uh, to see the, such faith in, in uh, Gentiles and, and comparing that to the rejection he got from, uh, say, the Pharisees or the Sadducees who tried to always trip him up. Um, but his work on the cross was for all, for you and me, for everybody. As Gentiles, we are allowed to believe and be saved. We have the privilege of believing in the Jewish Messiah. And, and it's ironic, uh, uh, sadly ironic, of uh, we believe in the Jewish Messiah, and yet many of the Jews reject him. Uh, Paul writes in several places that God gave him a ministry of the Gent to the Gentiles. Well, that's how we know that he's, uh, his ministry was, uh, uh, was focused on the Gentiles because he wrote and told us that. For instance, Romans eleven thirteen. But I'm speaking to you who are Gentiles. Again, this is the book of Romans. Inasmuch then as I am an apostle of Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. But I have written very boldly to you on some points, so as to remind you again, because of the grace that was given to me from God, to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, ministering as a priest of the gospel of God, so that my offering of the Gentiles may become accept acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Um, and... Uh, Another word that's that's repeated often is the gospel or the good news, repeatedly in, in this part of the book of Romans. It's repeated again at the end. But it's a thread of uh, in, of the fabric in Scripture, and and uh, uh, I couldn't. Uh, Herman's already accomplished uh, that. He's got a whole series on on the gospel of the gospel of God, the boss, gospel of Christ, the gospel of so many things, different perspectives of, on the gospel. So uh, that's on the website. Uh, you can go there and um, and uh, 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 listen to that series. Romans fifteen seventeen. Therefore, in Christ Jesus, I have found reason for boasting in things pertaining to God. For I will not presume to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, resulting in the obedience of the Gentiles by word and deed. In other words... He has had success among the Gentiles. Paul explains in an earlier letter to the Galatians that his focus was on the Gentiles. But when God, who had set me apart even from my mother's womb and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went away to Arabia and returned once more to Damascus. And uh, I think Herman and others have have uh, explained that uh, uh, Paul had a, a session maybe with Jesus Christ, a uh, revelation of uh, teaching about uh, the scriptures. Paul was uh, probably an expert on the, the text of the scriptures and what they said, uh, but he misunderstood what they meant. So once on the on the Damascus Road, when he finally believed, he began to understand what their true meaning was. So back to our passage in Romans 1 6. Among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. Uh, among whom you. Now it's been debated uh, how did the church at Rome get started? Paul's writing to a church that he has not visited. And, and certainly Peter had not been there yet. Um, uh, we don't have a biblical indication that, that, that Peter went there. There's others that say uh, Peter did eventually go there and was martyred there. Um, but uh, we don't know how the church got started. Now, some uh, say that uh, on Pentecost, 
uh, there were people from all over the known world uh, that, that came to Jerusalem and heard uh, uh, Peter's message. Uh, some of them may have gone back to Rome and started a church. So you may have had some uh, the gift of pastor teacher given to some people and they started a church in Rome. Uh, might have been other people. We just don't know. But we know there was a church there. Paul says there was. And uh, later on, we'll find out that their faith was was known throughout the empire. So uh, here was a church that had uh, uh, was doing some things that were right. They just needed some additional information and guidance from the Apostle Paul. So uh, in either case, these believers to whom Paul is writing were in a Gentile nation surrounded by other non-believing Gentiles. So this also meshes with uh, Paul's prime directive, as it were, to go to the Gentiles. Called of Jesus Christ. Okay, here's another word that's repeated throughout this chapter, called. So verse 1, Paul is called apostle. Uh, verse 6, you are called of Jesus Christ. Verse 7, those in Rome called saints. Uh, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, use that word called again until he get to chapter 8, which I find interesting. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about called at, uh, towards the end here because it comes up again uh, in this verse 7. Uh, to all who are beloved of God in Rome, called as saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So here we have a third use of the word all, and we talked about that. Who are beloved of God. Why are they beloved of God? Because they are in the beloved of Jesus Christ. And, and uh, I, I'm not, uh, maybe further on in the study, uh, I will talk about uh, the position in Christ, as theme calls it, positional truth, a very important doctrine. But we also know that when we uh, believe in Jesus Christ, uh, there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit that places us in Jesus Christ. But we get those 33 or 34 things uh, that uh, God gives us at that point. It's not just that we're saved, but we, we're, we're part of that salvation is imputation of righteousness, imputation of eternal life, a spiritual gift, uh, indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the potential for the filling of the Spirit, and it goes on and on and on. We have to uh, a tremendous number of gifts that God has given us. Uh, so, um, we are beloved, and, and God has showered on us all of these, these spiritual assets so that we might accomplish our mission, a uh, mission that he has given us. Ephesians uh, 1, 5, talking about the beloved. He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. So Jesus Christ is is the Son of God, is the 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 Son having taken on flesh, and He is the beloved. And now we are in Him, so we are beloved. Uh, in Him we have redemption. It's Ephesians one seven. In Him we ha we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace. Because we are in Him, we are beloved of God the Father. As I said, it's called Positional Truth by R.B. Thien. Now we talk about in Rome. Uh, I, as I, I don't uh, always have ready notes just to, to recycle. Uh, so every week I have to study and teach. Uh, I find new things, things I didn't know about. And so now I can teach them. Um, but I assume that uh, someone made up that phrase, all, ro all roads lead to Rome. We use that in various contexts. And I just assume that uh, that somebody, uh, some uh, modern historian came up with that phrase. But I was surprised to find that that was uh, the Romans themselves in ancient ancient Rome un, uh, came up with this. And, and there is in Rome a pillar named, uh, if I get the pronunciation correct, milia, Miliarium Aurum. The golden milestone. I guess aurum is is gold, and miliarium is is a milestone. And so I looked it up in Wikipedia. I got two paragraphs to read to you. The miliarium aurum, 
also known by the translation Golden Milestone, was a monument, probably a marble or gilded bronze, erected by Emperor Augustus near the Temple of Saturn in the central forum of ancient Rome, the Roman Forum. All roads were considered to begin at this monument, and all distances in the Roman Empire were measured relative to it, or perhaps were listed all the major cities in the empire, uh, distances to them on the monument. Through the monument's precise location and inscription, although the uh, uh, monument's precise location and inscription remain matters of debate among the historians, and they have a picture of, of the monument or the base of a pillar that may have been this uh, uh, monument, and they have an inscription that was found next to it um, with uh, that uh, the golden milestone in Latin. Uh, another another uh, uh, paragraph from Wikipedia. Augustus, as curator Viarum, erected the monument in 20 BCE. It probably received the name Miller, Mil Miliarium Aurum, soon after its inauguration. It symbolized the starting point of the Roman road system to the rest of Italy and to all the imperial possessions. Now, the roads are very important uh, for the military, and certainly there were, uh, Rome expanded uh, through its military, but in order to, uh, to better uh, take your supplies, uh, transport uh, uh, your weapons, and, and uh, uh, you had wagons, and uh, it was difficult to go through a, uh, a forest if there's no no uh, road. So they built a, 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 a road system that was very, uh, uh, very good. And some of those roads still exist today, 2,000 years later. Um, so... Uh, so look at look at the logic for for Paul's trip. Uh, yes, he wanted to visit Rome. He said so. It's the capital of the Roman Empire, and arguably the center of the capital of the Greco-Roman world at that time. So why wouldn't you want to go there? So indeed, he did go there. But from another perspective, and he says this, he, his main objective was apparently Spain. For this reason, uh, Romans 15, 22, for this reason, I have often been prevented from coming to you. But now, with no further place for me in these regions, and since I have had many years uh, long to come to you, whenever I go to Spain, uh, see, I'm on my way to Spain, for I hope to see you in passing and to be helped on my way there by you when I have first enjoyed your company for a while. So, Paul has said here that he's on his way to Spain, but but I'm going to stop by and 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 spend some time with you. So why go to Spain if, if uh, Rome if Spain is his ultimate goal? Why don't he go just go straight? Uh, certainly he does want to visit them. First, it's the center of the Greco-Roman world. It is more than likely that no apostle has yet visited Rome. So here's some churches, just like uh, um, in 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 uh, the so-called Asia, which is today Turkey and, and Greece, there were churches, and and uh, Paul went there. Uh, he, he may have established some churches, but there were churches that already existed. So he went there to provide guidance, uh, and in some cases, after he left, he'd write them letters. But certainly, uh, uh, there was the Great Commission on his mind. Uh, so Acts 1.8, uh, just before uh, Jesus left, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the world, or the earth. So uh, we know that uh, that Paul went to Rome. He may have gone to, some people think he went to Spain and, and then Britain. We don't know. Uh, we know that, uh, um, oh, I forget which, which one, which, um, uh, apostle was said to go to India, so there were other other apostles that were sent throughout the world. And then you have the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, 
teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So certainly Rome, along with Spain and Britain, qualified as the ends of the earth as known in those days. But more than that, it is a hub of international travel. Uh, so if all, reads, if all roads lead to Rome, there are many sea routes to Rome as well. If the roads lead to Rome, then the roads also lead back to the edge of the empire. Think of uh, as, as a hub of travel. If Paul left from Jerusalem to go to Spain, how many ships were going to that destination? Uh, so you think of, uh, of a hub system. Uh, you go, uh, well, like take, for instance, American Airlines. Uh, you think of a hub, you think of uh, Dallas or Atlanta or Chicago. Uh, so you want to go from one city to another, uh, say, mid-side city. Uh, there may not be a direct flight from, say, Dallas to some other other town so you you uh now dallas is a hub so you may have some there but you may have to go to chicago or atlanta um uh, i don't think uh, that american airlines has a direct flight to greece so if you want to go to greece you may have to go to jfk or maybe even atlanta or some other city another hub in order to get a flight so Rome was the, probably the largest hub, as it were, in the Roman Empire. So going there would give Paul a greater choice of ships and probably be less expensive to take him to Spain. Also, it was a shorter trip to go to Spain from Rome than to go straight to Spain from Jerusalem. And and we're, we're not talking hours, we're talking days or weeks, uh, depending upon uh, where they stopped and uh, uh, getting uh, uh, food uh, supplies for the ship. Uh, we've we've seen that uh, in one of uh, uh, Paul's journeys, uh, uh, they got shipwrecked. I believe it was at Malta. So, um, uh, difficult. Uh, so you going to uh, going to to uh, Rome gave him a, a hub of uh, maritime traffic. Additionally, it looks like Paul was looking for some financial help uh, to go to Spain. Uh, he may have, uh, he would need some money to uh, to buy food, supplies. Uh, um, and I know that he sometimes uh, supported himself as a tent maker, but he'd still need some supplies once you got there, whether it's uh, 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 leather or, or wood to put the, uh, uh, the tents together. So there's no, there's no biblical account of Paul actually going to Spain. Uh, there are extra biblical accounts that suggest that he he went to Spain, maybe even to Britain. Uh, but there's and there's no no biblical records of his death. Extra biblical accounts indicate he died during the narrow the reign of Nero by beheading. And uh, remember, uh, uh, Peter was crucified, but then Peter was not a Roman citizen, and I do not believe that a Roman citizen was allowed to be crucified so but they they what they were allowed to do was behead them and there's a sense uh, uh, in which we can use life Paul's life as a template for our own no Jesus Christ didn't appear to us and we're not an apostle and we there's not that much of a chance that we'll be headed by our government although there are people that uh, that are beheading people uh, Christians uh, but uh, at some point, um, someone gave us the gospel and we believe just like uh, 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 Jesus uh, uh, approached uh, uh, Paul on the Damascus road. Uh, so somewhere along our roads, uh, whether it's in college or school or work uh, or a gas station, uh, somebody gave us the gospel and we believed. Uh, someone who was ambassador of Christ gave us the good news and we believed. And at some point, you were called or invited to a specific mission and given a spiritual gift to assist you in that mission. Each one of us has a spiritual gift. Um, I didn't ask for the the gift of pastor teacher, and it wasn't me that uh, said, I'm a pastor teacher, here I am. Uh, it's just that uh, as I learned information, I couldn't help myself. Uh, I had to, to pass that on. And as I did that, people said, Kit, you have the gift. I do. Uh, and and uh, 
in time I, I had to study. Uh, and uh, Herman was gracious enough to have his class for four years after after church uh, uh, lesson. Um, and uh, uh, so now I, I, uh, I teach. And each one of you has a spiritual gift. I don't know what it is. Yeah, but as you learn uh, Bible information, uh, walk by faith, it will become evident what what uh, your uh, the Holy Spirit pushes you to do. Uh, and remember what Paul said, be imitators of me, just as I am also of Christ. So he's really saying, use me as a template. Do the, the kinds of things I do, walk by faith, uh, learn Bible information, understand who and what God is. Uh, so you li we listen to Paul uh, as he teaches us. Or it looked at uh, Ephesians 5.1. It's even more, uh, therefore, be imitators of God. Remember here, be imitators of me just as I am also of, God, of Christ. So, uh, therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. And, <clears throat> and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave him to up himself up for us an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. So, uh, called saints. Uh, this is the third use of called. The basic meaning of this word is invited. Uh, in this chapter, it seems to have a stronger meaning than that. Paul was an apostle. And if he, if he was just invited, then, well, he grabbed that invitation and he ran with it. Uh, if the believers in Rome were invited uh, invited ones of Jesus, then we know they grabbed the invitation and ran with it. We know that uh, that because Paul later on shares that their faith is known throughout the empire. If they were invited as saints, then they grabbed that and demonstrated that through their faith. So we are called of Jesus Christ. We are called saints. We are uh, outfitted, as it were, with uh, spiritual assets in order for us to accomplish our mission. So each one of us has a mission. Uh, just because you you sit uh, uh, in a chair and listen, that's good. Uh, but there is a daily task, and that involves walking by faith. And God will, uh, for lack of a better word, provoke us uh, to use our spiritual gift to uh, learn Bible doctrine, uh, to implement that in our lives, to understand what who and what God is, to move forward. Uh, as I said uh, many times, uh, as so goes the Christian in a, in a nation, so goes the nation. So uh, you can, by walking by faith, uh, accomplishing what God's plan is for you, uh, be helping the uh, stability of our nation. And remember that uh, the word saints uh, is uh, set apart ones, and we are set apart to God, so we are to be, as it says, imitators of God. Now, I talked, I, I, I skipped over the word uh, grace, and uh, there is a, uh, uh, a uh, um, doctrine that Herman has, and let me, we'll just go briefly to it uh, in the time remaining. So uh, um, in Ephesians 2.5, if you look, you can look at it for, uh, since our, our lessons are done by date, you can look in Ephesians for uh, March 13th, and you can see uh, Herman's uh, Doctrine of Grace. And we can just read a little bit here before we complete, uh, but you'll have, uh, I think it's 12 pages, and so that's another hour by itself. So uh, RB theme, we talked, uh, I've I mentioned this a couple of times. Grace is all that God is free to do for man on the basis of the cross, on the basis of propitiation. And and remember, we go, we constantly go back to the book of Job because he talks about uh, uh, the need for righteousness. Uh, who, who can make a clean out of unclean? From a human perspective, nobody can. Only God can do that. And God became flesh Jesus went to the cross, and, and because of his work on the cross and after the resurrection, uh, the clean, the unclean can become clean by faith in Jesus Christ. And, of course, the people in the Old Testament, uh, to uh, head off your question, 
uh, they were made clean by faith because they're looking forward to the cross. We look back to the cross as an accomplished fact. Uh, Merrill Unger, in 1957, graces what God may be free to do and indeed what he does accordingly for the lost after Christ has died on behalf of them. Um, uh, Wikipedia, it is understood by Christians to be a spontaneous gift from God to people, generous, free, and totally unexpected and undeserved. That takes the form of divine favor, love, clemency, and a share in the divine life of God. It is an attribute of God that is most manifest in the salvation of sinners. Uh, C.L. Mitten, 1962. God's unmerited, free, spontaneous love for sinful man revealed and made effective in Jesus Christ. In Hebrew, grace involves such other subjects as forgiveness, salvation, regeneration, repentance, and the love of God, or grace, favor, acceptance. In Greek, charis, translated grace, graciousness, kindness, goodwill, gift, favor, thanks, and gratitude. Nelson, favor or kindness shown without regard to the worth or merit of the one who receives it, and in spite of what the person deserves. By grace you have been saved, Ephesians 2.5. Uh, the Revell Concise Bible Dictionary, God's free and spontaneous action taken to meet human need, especially in providing salvation and enabling the believer. The Anchor Bible, Volume 2, Grace in the Old Testament. Grace is the favor of God to human beings. The subject of grace in the Old Testament is too vast for, for comprehensive treatment. Grace in the New Testament, grace is love demonstrated by giving. In the gospel, grace is unmerited favor, arising in the mind of God and bestowed on his people. It is often considered with regard to its beneficial effects. And on and on and on. And uh, so you've got the, the, the a tremendous amount of uh, work done by, by Herman here to give us this doctrine. Um, I'll let you uh, read that. Uh, uh, as you so desire, as you have time. Uh, but grace is uh, the plan of God. Uh, he can only do that because of the work of Jesus Christ. Uh, again, back to Job. Uh, God cannot pervert his righteousness, so he has to judge sin. If he didn't judge sin and, and accepted us uh, uh, sin and all, while he would prefer his righteousness, he'd no longer be God. So he has to judge by his, his righteousness. Uh, his, his, his justice has to judge our sins. And since we can't bear them, uh, the judgment, uh, Jesus Christ could. Uh, and that's the, the beauty of, of salvation is that uh, Jesus Christ, uh, our substitute, went to the cross, was judged for sin, and now we just believe and we inherit or we are imputed God's righteousness. We're imputed eternal life. All who believe, but all those who do not believe will end up with a second death and go to the lake of fire forever. So you have, again, all who believe and all who don't believe. Nothing in between. May God add his blessing to the word of God, uh, the reading of his, his word. Let us end in prayer. Thank you, Father, for your word, uh, that it is life, that it is refreshment, that it is sustenance. Uh, we pray, Father, that uh, uh, you'll take uh, my frail words that I have given, uh, empower them through the power of the Holy Spirit, that they might... Uh, be helpful for those who listen, uh, that uh, might uh, help the church grow, help the individual believers grow. Thank you again, Father, for so many blessings. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.